Well, hello everyone. Hello. Before I do the Vortex Gen 3 review, I have to demonstrate some things, and this might make some of you slightly upset, or shocked even, but not everyone tells the truth when describing their own optics, or some of these reviews that you see on YouTube, there are more ad reads than they are research. There are certain places I go when I need honest reviews on optics or whether they can be hard use or not. People like C does, C underscore does, great channel. He's the reason I bought my P4XI, honestly. Thank you. His videos are pretty awesome. His optic reviews are very, very unique. I really appreciate his his work and he does very, very good jobs on his optic reviews. Nine Hole Reviews does a good job. Tiberosaurus Rex or Rex Reviews does a good job. Aaron Cowan will show you <laughs> if uh, Optic can survive a drop test and he does a good job with his reviews as well. And Garantham does some good work with his optic reviews as well. He's usually pretty balanced with his stuff. But there's a lot of guys out there that just do ad reads. And there's also, I'm sure I forgot a couple channels in there so don't cut my head off. Some people just get a stat sheet and say, wow, this is a true 1X. Like my Steiner, for instance. And you get the optic and you start using it and you're like, hang on a second, that's not 1X. And sometimes it's not enough magnification to really matter. But C does is pretty excellent about calling that stuff out. The other channels will mention it, which is fine, it's their review format. But C does is really good about that. Now I have this revolutionary space age tool in my house that I use to judge whether an optic has fisheye or not and what the magnification is at 1x. Whether it's at or close to true 1x or if it's slightly magnified at 1x. I call this tool the lie detector light switch. Using the space age technology at a measured distance of six feet. I use my island for reference so I'm in the same position each time. The eye relief is slightly different on each optic so if the perspective looks different, I use a GoPro with my hand. I don't have a jig and getting the eye relief right is different on each optic so it may look slightly different but I promise you my hip is touching the same exact spot on the island. And I measured it to be six feet away. So six feet away from my legendary space age technology of the lie detector light switch, we're gonna start taking a look at some of these optics. Using this tool, I will be able to reliably demonstrate slight magnification at 1x or whether or not there is fisheye present in the optic. For this video, I have six optics at my disposal. My beloved P4XI, the primary arms 1-6 ACSS Raptor first focal plane, the Trigicon Credo 1-6 first focal plane red mill, the Trigicon VCOG 1-6, which is first focal plane, the Trigicon AccuPower 1-8, and the Vortex Razor Gen 3. It's a small sample, but a pretty prevalent sample of optics for what people are using. I don't have an attacker, unfortunately, and I don't make Schmidt and Bender money. Maybe one day, though, that one to eight dual CCs, call them my name. Let's kick things off with my beloved P4XI. Man, that glass is clear. You can see some moderate increased magnification at 1x, something like 1.05 to 1.1-ish. So despite my love and feelings, the P4XI does not have a true 1X. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Sorry, Steiner. But it doesn't have any fisheye, which you can see, which is great. The way to tell fisheye with a straight edge on your wall is to see if that straight edge bends as you pan, which, as you can see in the video, we didn't have that issue. So the Steiner does have slight magnification at 1x, but no fisheye. Remarkably clear glass, daylight bright dot, a lot of fun features, but at 1x, it's not a true 1x. 
All right, let's move on to the primary arms. Raptor, ACSS, first focal plane. Oh geez, right off the bat we have some magnification. A touch of warm tint. And you can see the fish eye. Interesting. So we have some slight fish eye. Nothing too terrible. And definitely a tint in the glass. And it's pretty easy to see that there's some slight magnification while panning. Okay. All right. Okay. Allegedly. Okay, Dan. And okay. Okay, Dan. And okay. Let's check out the Trijicon Credo 1 to 6 first focal plane red mill. So, mouthful. Oh, wow. Clear glass. And look at that 1x. Dare I say, almost exactly a 1x. Excellent. Zero fisheye. Honestly, I'm genuinely impressed. Good job, Trijicon. That's <laughs> I didn't expect that. When I was messing with it, I was like, wow, this looks really good. And then started messing with, it's my friend's, so I don't go out and shoot it too much, but only when he's there and I say, hey, can I shoot your rifle? And he says, yes. But that's the optic I recommend you get, and I'm genuinely impressed with how good that is. All right, let's look at the VCOG while we're on one to sixes. Damn near the same, but smaller field of view. Very, very close. I can't really decide if there's a touch of magnification or not. It looks very, very similar to the Credo. Sorry about the illumination, the battery died. Excellent glass though. Probably the best glass so far. The Credo's got really, really solid glass. It's uh, Japanese glass from the Low Factory. Very, very good glass. But this is shot glass, so it should be better. And it is. Very crystal clear. Very flat image. No fish eye. Just like the Trijicon Credo. I guess we're on a Trijicon kick, going to the older AccuPower 1-8. to They've come out with the Credo, so this is going to be different. Now please ignore the probable shaking, because it's a heavy rifle. But, let's get to it. Pretty clear, nice small scope body, slight magnification, and maybe a slight tint even. No fisheye, just like the Steiner, just a little bit of magnification, but no fisheye, which is nice. And the glass is pretty good. I think the new Credo glass is better than the glass that's in the AccuPower. But I love my little, you know, F-150 optic. It's big and heavy, but it's reliable. That optics never let me down. I've never had problems with it. Okay, hey, Derek. They're okay. Okay, Derek. They're okay. All right. Now, the main event. The one everybody's probably here for. The Vortex Razor Gen 3. Let's take a look. Nice clear glass with no tint. Oh boy. Slight magnification. And some fisheye in my $2,000 optic. Wonderful. Looks like the lie detector light switch keeps all these optics honest. <laughs> hey, 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 what's going on? And the optic companies which is good. And it's funny because I didn't really notice the tint in the AccuPower, my one to eight, until just now. I don't really, I, in my review, I said that it didn't really have tint, but it looks like there's a slight tint in the one to eight. I'm not sure if that's the lighting or what. I didn't want to turn all the lighting on and you know let it blast through the optic and make it look super amazing. Plus it's going through a camera. Not nearly as bad as the primary arms, but here we are. And the glass is much better in the AccuPower, but it's not the Platinum line versus the AccuPower, so not quite same same. But it's slightly warm, could be dirty, I don't know, I'm going to take a look at it. So this video isn't an indictment of the optics or fisheye or saying like, hey, fisheye is so terrible you can't use the opt. There are, <laughs> don't get me wrong, there are drawbacks from fisheye and there are some optics with incredibly awful fisheye. And really the only place that you see fisheye take effect, and you'll see this, in, C does demonstrates this, when you dial a lot of elevation and then try to zoom back in, the erector assembly is pointing through a different portion of the glass. 
So if the center of the glass is good, but it's the, I don't know, say the outermost 30 or 40 or 20 or whatever percentage, then whatever that percentage is, if you dial into that with the erector assembly, then you're gonna get a blurred image and it's gonna soften or it's gonna bend or something like that. There's some optic companies that always offer flat, precise images with no fisheye but with slight magnification. And you're gonna run into that with optics and it's really hard to show that through cameras and then it's even harder for some people to get a hold of these. The reason I strive so hard to put a lot of time into these optic reviews when I do them and I am not the best guy to do it by far, don't get me wrong, I, the people I mentioned earlier, C does, Nine Hole Reviews, Aaron Cowan, Grand Thumb, all those dudes are uh, Rex Reviews, all those dudes are better at it than I am. The only thing is, for, I'm a regular dude, I have glasses and astigmatism, all right? So I look at it from a regular guy's perspective and I try to be as practical with stuff as possible. And there's a lot of guys that, when they're doing YouTube videos, they either don't know what these things are or they're just doing ad reads or something, right? And this is not, <laughs> just because I didn't mention them in the initial group of guys that I just mentioned, does not mean that I think they're automatically bad. It's a case by case basis and some channels just pick something up from, they get sent something, they're on short time, they read what the card says. All I'm saying is it's important for me to let everyone know from my perspective because I work for my money, I don't make money on YouTube, any of this other stuff. It's important for me to let you guys know what I'm experiencing and seeing and what you can expect because a lot of, I had to buy this blind. I got to mess with one for a half a second because <laughs> someone was cool with me and they're like, hey, this was, you know, purchased by a customer. You can be gentle with it. You know, don't, don't do anything crazy. And I was able to look through it and I said, wow, the glass is really clear and then gave it back to him. It wasn't until I purchased it, got it home, got it on the rifle, started messing with it that I started seeing different things. And it's the same with all these other optics. I think the only optic that I was able to mess with was a P4XI and then I ordered it from somewhere else because the price was ridiculous. Every single one of my optics saved the P4XI and the few seconds I got to play with the Razer 1 to 10 before purchasing. Every other one I purchased blind and I went off of YouTube reviews. And Mr. Guns and Gear did a really, really good job on the 1 to 6 VCOG and his review held up. The The way it looks and the way it works, I really love the 1 to 6 VCOG. It's a very, very good optic and if you can find it used like I did, highly recommend. I have reviews coming on both of these optics which is why they're on the table. You've already seen the other ones. So I'm going to incorporate the lie detector light switch in my future videos and I'm going to try to do my best to give you the most upfront and honest review for an optic I possibly can because I know a lot of y'all work for your money like I do. Of course manufacturers are gonna say, and you know the other thing too, the benefit of the doubt that I'm gonna give other people is sometimes they haven't reviewed a lot of optics or it's their first one or they have a bunch of trash tier quality optics and they say, wow, this is the closest to 1X I've ever seen. And at that point in time, it might be correct. But as far as some other people, they're, they're just doing ad reads or whatever, it, perspective is key, right? But in my optic reviews, I'm gonna use the lie detector light switch and we're gonna see if it has fisheye, see if it has any sort of magnification and go from there. And one more thing before I punch out, this is not something you may notice at the range. In fact, fisheye is really, unless it's egregious, moderate fisheye like in this vortex, you're only gonna notice when you're inside. So if you're doing home defense stuff or if you're in a professional environment, if you're clearing buildings or you know, doing CQC stuff, you'll notice it. But if you're outdoors, you're not gonna notice it. So it's all subjective as to how important it is to you, but noting that it's there and you can see how it looks through the, through the glass, that's what's important to me. Not, oh, this is so terrible, you'll never be able to use it, you're gonna die. It's, it's not like that, all right? Just wanted to do this to lay some groundwork. So when the Vortex Gen 3 review drops here soon after this video, 
it'll make sense, but there's a little bit of fisheye, a little bit of magnification, and most optics suffer from this. I think most of the time, a quality one to six, I've heard the Delta Striker from C does and a few other guys that have reviewed it, the VCOG and the Credo have really, really close, if not true 1Xs. And there's a few other optics out there that do the same. And the one to six, for some reason, seems to be able to do that. The one to eights, because of the magnification range, suffer from that. It may be a four power thing, because my one to four does it as well. I don't know, but it's good to check it. Have some sort of standard measurement. So that's what I'm gonna do. Six feet away from the wall, pan across the light switch. Hopefully y'all can have the space age technology available to you as well. And all of you guys are doing okay out there. But as always, thanks for watching. Take care out there.